Hello everyone and welcome back to another aquatic adventure. I am Erin with Wave Foundation at Newport Aquarium and I'm here in our Stingray Hideaway exhibit today to talk about one of my favorite animals. They are the horseshoe crab. Now we are surrounded by stingrays and they will probably photobomb at some point which is fantastic uh, but we are actually looking at these three animals down here and of course at the time when I'm here they are sleeping. Um, but they are all kind of connected and piled up like that in order to have more protection while they sleep and rest. Um, so that is why they are doing that. Oftentimes you will see them walking around in here um, and moving around very similar to other crabs. Now horseshoe crabs are such cool animals and there are many reasons for that and we're going to cover as many as I can today. So one thing that you may have heard about horseshoe crabs is that they are known as living fossils. And the way that animals get that sort of determination as a living fossil, uh, these animals actually were on earth and in the oceans predating the dinosaurs. And from that time to now, they've been very relatively unchanged. They looked pretty much like this um, at that time. And so with all of that time, they have gone unchanged. That sort of helps animals and, and is when we give that distinction of a living fossil. So they are a very cool animal for that. That means that their adaptations are very strong. They are able to continue and withstand through a lot of different changes and different ecosystems, which is also evident by where they can be found. They can be found in the Atlantic Ocean all the way from the coast of Maine all the way down to Mexico. Now the reason I emphasize that is because the water temperatures along that area are drastically different. In Maine it can be very very cold and then all the way down to Mexico gets to nice warm what we would consider tropical water. And so being able as one species to withstand that kind of temperature difference just all the time is a very very unique adaptation that they have and that's one thing that has helped them to survive as they are for as long as they have. Now, they also have a lot of eyes. That's <laughs> something that I hear a lot that people know about horseshoe crabs. Um, they have about nine sets of eyes, but this isn't like eyes that you and I have. Um, they don't have quite that kind of vision. A lot of the eyes that they have are actually more about light detection. So they simply help them to tell um, where is the sunlight. I'm getting beautiful sunlight this morning. Um, where is the sunlight? Where um, is the darker areas? and sort of detect that kind of difference rather than actually being able to see distinctly the way you and I do with our eyes. Uh, so they do have a lot of eyes and some of them actually can detect UV wavelengths, which is really cool and important out in the ocean when there is not as much light present. And so those eyes are another incredible adaptation that they have. Now, they do have to molt in order to grow. They have the hard exoskeleton and that actually doesn't allow them to grow as you and I would. They have to shed that exoskeleton, swell up and grow that way. So you actually can find oftentimes along the beaches from Maine to Mexico um, during their breeding season in the spring, you can find kind of an empty hollow horseshoe crab shell. And that's a molt. It doesn't mean that a horseshoe crab died. It simply means that a horseshoe crab is growing, which is awesome. And so those molts can be found everywhere. They shed them and then they will regrow um, and reharden that exoskeleton. Now, one really important thing about horseshoe crabs for us humans is that they have something really different about their blood. Um, and that's actually very useful in the medical field. So we have white blood cells that help us to fight off infections. They do not have white blood cells, um, but that doesn't mean that they're susceptible to infection. They simply have something else. They have something called amoebocytes which is just a different kind of cell, but the way it fights infection is that around a bacteria or something that's not supposed to be in their system, the amoebocytes will coagulate. That means congeal, form a blob and a clump around that infection or that thing that's not supposed to be there. So for them, that's how they fight it and then their body will expel and get rid of that clump. For us and in the medical field, they have realized that that can be done and help us to detect any kind of imperfection or um, issue in some of our medical tools and vaccines and drugs and other things like that and medications. And so we actually, just like human blood donations, we can take some blood from horseshoe crabs, gather those amoebocytes and add them to different medications or different things and see if those coagulate. If they were to do that, that would mean there's an issue and something wrong in that medical item. If they don't, then that means that it's clean and safe. So these horseshoe crabs are incredible animals in the ocean. They are very cool, have been around for eons. 
um, and they have incredible adaptations that have allowed them to survive for that long. So I hope you all get a chance to see horseshoe crabs somewhere along a coastline. Um, look them up and learn more about their incredible adaptations. I covered a few today. They have so many more. Uh, so I hope you have a great day and we will see you again.